Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be going over the history and geography of Al Qadarif in Sudan. Now you can see the spelling here is a little different than what you see in the title of this video. It's interchangeable, they're pronounced pretty much exactly the same. Uh, but the one in the title of this video is the most common spelling that I found, so I'm going with that, but it is spelled quite differently in my atlas, so just keep that in mind. Don't get confused. It's the same place. al Qadar Reef is located in western Sudan. You can see that it borders the Tigray region of Ethiopia here, which is going to be important in its history um, and it's very near the capital city of Khartoum you can see that um, it's pretty much the link between Khartoum and Ethiopia the Red Sea everything happening over in the Horn of Africa al Qadarif has a very interesting landscape most of Sudan is very deserty. It's the uh, Sahara. You can see up here. Can you see up there? Yeah, the Sahara Desert starts to bleed into the Sahel, which it just means it's the, you can see right there, Sahel. The region between the hot desert and the rainforest jungle of Central Africa. The Sahel is in between. Not quite desert, not quite jungly. So, Al Qadarif is right in that Sahel, Sahara era, area, heading into the Central African rainforest. This area up here is pretty barren and desert like. As you move more and more in, it gets much more forested and uh, there's lots of farmland in this area. You can see the various rivers crisscrossing where we enter the capital city of the same name, al Qadarif. And there is a big important river that flows right through here. It looks really small and tiny on my map, but once I show you on Google Earth, it's a pretty major river. It is the Atbara River. It's also known as the Red Nile or the Black Nile since it uh, flows up this way. It comes from Ethiopia actually. It goes up into the Nile River up just north of Khartoum. So that really creates a very lush landscape and then once you get down here it's very jungly. You can even see the, uh, what's it called? The Dindere National Park is in the southern area here and it's pretty much like you know just picture in your mind African jungle with like the elephants, giraffes, all those wonderful creatures that's what this national park is like it's pretty amazing and like I said I will show you on Google Earth but um, before we do that let's talk about the history of it this region because it's pretty interesting. The capital city here started off as a market town and the name reflects that. al Qadarif comes from, allegedly, it comes from an Arabic phrase that means, let me check my notes to get the right quote that I got, he who has finished buying and selling should leave. That's what it means. Very funny. If you've ever worked in retail, you know that feeling, right? Like, um, it, it's closing time. You gotta go. You can be here, but you can't be here, right? Um, but it, the, the phrase used to be shouted out when it was closing time in the market so that everyone would know that it's, it's time to get going, you know? So the name stuck, and it stuck in the According to like the, the local legend. 
but this marketplace was very important because there were many, many different nomadic tribes in this area of Sudan, what's now South Sudan, Ethiopia, and this was a big meeting spot for a lot of them, especially after harvesting so they could replenish their stock, you know, um, get everything situated for their tribes. It's a very, very important market town for the nomadic peoples there. This area wouldn't really start to get built up until the British get involved. So, long story short, um, Britain took over Egypt, Egypt took over Sudan. So, it was technically a, a British territory, right? A lot of people in Sudan were not happy about that. In particular, there was a man who is now known in history as the Mahdi. The Mahdi was an extreme Islamist, I suppose. Um, not quite when you think of like extreme Islamists today. More like um, he believed in like a more monastic, a very like solemn Islam. But he also did not want the British telling him what to do. So he managed to pull together an army known as the Mahdists, and they waged war with the British across Sudan. And Al Qadarif was a very large base from them. They fought a very large battle here against the British, which the British would wind up winning. Uh, but there was a lot of armed resistance across Sudan, this being one of the territories of that revolution. And not much happens here until the area begins to modernize. Pretty much every single source that I found about this region talked about its modernized agriculture. That's like a huge point to mention about this area, apparently, is the modernized agriculture. And I'm like, one, what does that mean? And two, why is that important? Um, but one, what modernized agriculture means. It means that they got like tractors and heavy machinery like you would see in like the USA and Canada and the Great Plains regions there, um, you know, using machinery and equipment to farm their crops. And, you know, me in America is like, well, yeah, what else are you using, right? <laughs> but it's important to remember that the people in this region have been farming the same way for thousands of years, planting seeds by hand, you know, tilling the soil, picking crops themselves, watering, making their own irrigation, things like that. So when modernized farming came into the area in the 1950s, I imagine that it was a big deal. And I assume, based on how many sources pointed out the modernized agriculture of al Qadarif, I assume that this region is very, very modernized in their agriculture compared to, like, the rest of Sudan, right? I feel like, um, this area must be very efficient when it comes to its farming, as opposed to other areas of Sudan, right? I assume, at least. Mainly cotton is grown here, and lots of grains, like wheat and cereals, things like that. Things that soak up that good Nile River silt, you know. The Nile isn't anywhere near here. Well, I guess it sort of is. It's nearer than most places, but um, I, I, I assume it's part of the floodplains of the Nile in a way, you know. It's got the tributaries and all that. Um, and pretty much from what I can tell, not much has happened historically in the area. It just seems kind of like an agricultural region or like a region to drive through on your way to and from Khartoum. 
The only real modern history that I've found has to do with the Tigray region of Ethiopia. There has been a lot of unrest. Uh, there's been like an independence movement, a big rebel movement that's very violent over in Ethiopia. So many, many refugees have crossed the border seeking asylum here in El Gadarif. And there are many large refugee camps, like in this area here near the river, to this day. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think like, how else to describe this. Um, it's it's not very amicable either. Like I said, a lot of nomadic tribes are still in this area, and farming is a big deal here, as you know. So. The fact that this border now has, um, like a refugee rebel tension to it, the people that live near the border have been getting harassed by the other side, you know, on both ends. So it's fairly tense. I mean, that's kind of a theme with Ethiopia's history is if you live near the borders, be careful. But um, that is going on today in the region. It's very, very tense. And as long as the Tigrayan fighters are fighting, it's going to continue. There's not much that Sudan can do about it. So that is where we are in the history of El Qadarif. Let me grab my tablet so I can show you the area because it is very interesting. Let me... Oops, I've got it. Upside down. Okay. It's upside down. <laughs> Flip over, please. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So here is Al Qadarif. Got a little slideshow for you here so you can see what the city looks like. So you can see from these pictures, it is awfully green, isn't it? So you don't really associate green lush land with Sudan, but then you see these big Nile tributaries, right? little goats there, lots of little huts, lots of farming happening there. What is that, the corn? No, that's some kind of root, I think, or grain of some kind. But yeah, there's the big river, little village there, it's really cute. Looks like a dam there, which there is um, further up on the river. I guess I could show you on Google Earth. I don't have to show you on the map. It's up here. Let me show you on Google Earth. Let's zoom out so you can see exactly where we're in the world. There's the dam. So, here we are in Eastern Africa. And now you can really see what I mean by the Sahara, the Sahel, and the rainforest. And as you can see, we are right in that section of where the desert meets the jungle. And here you can see, it's kind of hard to see the borders, but we've got the deserty region over here. There's Khartoum, the capital. It's quite rocky and barren. You can see all of the various dried up wadis there making little lightning strikes on the land. And then when you start heading this way, you can see the landscape change into a greener one, a more, um, a more like farming land, you know. You can see areas that have been a little bit like, looks like they've been slashed and burned in the past. And here you can see the river, right? Isn't it much more prominent <laughs> from the view of the earth? You can see the landscape around it that's been um, chopped up and tilled for agriculture, probably so it can flood and create uh, some irrigation. And then we head down into the Dindir National Park. Let's look at the animals. Look at this photo of like the antelopes here and the zebras running through. Some cheetahs, some big old birds, looks like storks of some kind. Dindir National Park. Cranes, some sweet kind of deer. There's 
some more. They're at the watering hole. I can see some elephants back there. Zebras. Uh, warthogs. Giraffes. Uh, some more kind of like water birds. Looks like some kind of egret, doesn't it? A little antelope friend. A beautiful rhinoceros. More birds, water buffalo, and a big migration happening there in this beautiful lush park land. And flamingos, how special. So yes, we go from this rocky, barren, Saharan desert terrain to the jungle. Isn't that neat? How you just kind of get all of northern and central Africa in this little corner of the land. How cool is that? Now, if I recall, I also love Village 10, Village 3, you know? I don't think there's any pictures. I think I have um, tried to like scour this area to show you some more cool pictures and that's pretty much all that I've got. It's not really a tourist kind of place to come, you know? So not a lot of people have come to post their photographs so there's not very many pictures to show you but I think from above you can see the story of this land you know and how important it is to like the overall way of life of these people you know you can get the nomads of the desert the nomads of the forest all kind of meet here in the town where you have to leave at closing time. <laughs> Does anyone, you know what? <laughs> I used to work at a place where I had, I was, okay, I was a manager there. I had control of the sound system, and when it was time to leave, like it was almost closing time, I would start playing songs that had goodbye in the title and playing closing time and stuff. So, pretty much the equivalent of. <laughs> Of what people used to do in the markets here. Not the equivalent, but the closest thing to a modern day. Huh? Look how big and bustling the city is. You look at the pictures, it looks so tiny, but from above it looks massive, doesn't it? All these tiny little homes. Look at that. Big old yards, too. I really love African urban planning because you... It's like... A yard with shared homes whereas like in America you get like no shared anything I like all the space that's around it creates an interesting view from above so I think I'm gonna end it there before I keep babbling on <laughs> if you enjoyed this style of content please consider subscribing I'm going to every corner of the world next we're going to be going to Iraq so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I really hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a good, 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 good night. Good night.